Hello and welcome to Jill Cameron Creations. Today we are looking at some Father's Day cards. Bow ties are cool, baby! We are using the Nifty Plaid and the Dapper Chap stamp set uh, by Paper Tray Ink, Ink to Paper, um, their new line that Paper Tray Ink has. And it is absolutely fantastic. So these are all the products that we're using. Here's all the different papers. And I'm using a craft card base. And my color palette is a gray and navy and some white in there. Now I filmed this probably about a month, month and a half ago. So my fingernails look really different. My hair's still blonde. <laughs> All that good stuff. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is stamp a background here. Now this stamp is not wide enough to be a full background. It's meant to be an accent piece, but it is this awesome, completely and totally awesome background that you can trim down to the size that you want it to be. Or you can always absolutely stamp this multiple times. I'm honestly just not that brave. Okay, so here we'll, here's what we're gonna do. I am actually using uh, the Distress Glaze instead of, I'm using the Embossing Glaze instead of straight up Embossing Powder. I wanted it to be a lot more subtle than using embossing powder and I didn't really want a metallic look. I still wanted something very, very uh, kind of matte looking, but you know, embossing powder is going to be shiny, but I still wanted it to kind of look a lot more matte than like a uh, metallic. I'm using Distress Embossing Ink as well. And I'm making sure that that's on there really good. Now the thing about Distress embossing ink is it kind of acts like distress ink does in that it's not going to get it at a hundred percent this is not going to happen uh, unless you do it multiple times now i am going to pull this piece of paper out and i'm going i'm using hickory smoke on this and i love this hickory smoke because it gives just that hint it looks really really dark but once you melt it it is so pretty it is so so pretty i had a couple places that i saw my big fat thumbprint and where I didn't get my embossing, my anti-static powder tool on there really good. And so I have to go back with a little paint brush here. And this is how you take care of that. Just a little paint brush and remove that kind of stuff. Now, there's a couple places that it doesn't really show up. And it really makes it look a lot more distressed, which I really do like. And then I'm going to pull out my heat gun and I'm going to melt it. You really can't tell the difference. This is kind of what it looks like, except that it looks a little bit lighter, I think. Um, after it melts, it kind of just softens a little bit. Does that make any sense? Uh, I'm really liking the Distress Glaze because it just can add a hint of something to it. Um, so there was a couple times that I had to look at it, uh, you know, and go, um, did I melt that? <laughs> uh, I really had to stop and, and look and check and make sure that I actually melted it. Then once we're done with the melting of the embossing powder here, I'm going to trim this panel down and we're going to pop it up on our card base. Now I'm also doing something a little bit different than I normally do in that I'm using white pigment ink. And I'm not usually a huge fan of pigment inks. Uh, it Just because when I first started stamping and making cards and stuff, I only had pigment ink and I didn't know any better. I didn't know that there was a difference between dye inks and pigment inks. And that's one reason why I created Card Making 101 to answer those kinds of questions so that when you're a brand new card maker, you have those answers already and you can spend your money appropriately. Um, anyway, so I just don't ever think to really pick up pigment inks. However, the Distress Oxide line has really made me rethink picking up pigment inks. And I pick up my Distress Oxide inks a lot because they have that pigment opaque quality to them, which I really, really, really like. So we've trimmed down our panel and now I'm going to move on to stamping. I'm, I usually do all of my stamping first and then I do all of my embossing and then I do uh, you know, and I kind of work everything so that it's all in a, some kind of assembly line to kind of order there. 
Now, normally, if I'm making this for just me, I'm going to scrunch all three of those down. But because I'm making a video for y'all, I want y'all to be able to see what I'm doing. I would actually, for me, I would turn those on their side and stamp them all in a row to conserve paper. But I wanted y'all to see what I'm actually doing. And if you do that, can't really see it. So I'm using white pigment ink here. And I'm still using that same tap method that I use every for anything else that I do. I don't know if y'all have noticed that or not. I don't really put my stamp in the ink pad. I bring my ink pad to the stamp. And I even do that when it's on a block for the most part. Unless I'm stamping just like a little sentiment. You do want to heat set this so you don't stick your big fat finger in it and smear it everywhere. And trust me, I would. And if you notice, these have a um have patterns to them there's also a solid stamp so if you didn't have like navy paper you could stamp the background stamp in navy and then stamp the white over it and get the same look or do any other color that you wanted to uh, you could also stamp the background in whatever color you wanted to and then stamp over it with uh, clear emb embossing ink and do clear embossing powder or silver pearl embossing powder and cleaning up pigment ink is not fun. Uh, it gets absolutely everywhere. That's something else I'm not real thrilled about. Anyway, so, but I do like the, how these turned out. I really do like this. I think there is a coordinating die set. I just did not get them uh, when I ordered my stamps and dies. Instead, I'm actually going to uh, fussy cut them out. I know, shock and awe at that, right? There's also a detail piece on this that goes in the center of your bow ties here. So they actually look like real, honest to goodness, bow ties. I'm keeping my panel square on my mat. And I am sticking my head straight over it so that you can see straight through the block and line your stamp up. If you try to do it off to the side, it's going to be off to the side. Just so you know there. Now... Y'all know me, I'm not a big fussy cutter. It's not my favorite thing in the world to do, but guess what? I did it for these because they were pretty doggone simple. Um, and it was, it's literally, you know, a couple straight lines. There's no real hard curves in it. The, uh, <laughs> the only problem that I have is I have bifocals now. <laughs> and I had to pull my glasses on top of my head because I still couldn't see to cut and hold it where I needed it to be so that you, you could see it <laughs> uh, in the camera. So I had to uh, pull my glasses on my head. That was interesting. <laughs> That's why I keep moving it back and forth because I can't see it. <laughs> Sorry, it get, gives me the giggles just thinking about that. Anyway, so I cut out all three of these that way and fussy cut them. Not a big deal. All right, so let's get the rest of this card put together here. So I'm going to stamp the sentiment real quick, and I'm going to use that same dark blue ink that I used to stamp the detail in the bow ties. And it just, it's a simple sentiment from the same exact, exact stamp set as the bow ties. And it is just says, Happy Father's Day. And I'm just stamping that really quick. And I'm not stamped, this isn't exactly white paper. It is more of a really super light stone color. I think is kind of the color I would call it. Um, it's more stone than it is anything. So it's not like mm, white in your face, but it's not, um, it's not really a color if that makes any sense whatsoever. Okay, so I'm gonna glue the panel down to the card. Now, I when, and I'm gonna share this over on my blog as well. I have a card sketch and a color combination that goes along with this card and that was kind of the inspiration from for this so everything's going to be kind of set off to the left because this was a very uh straightforward interpretation of the card sketch itself and i will share that like i said over on my blog you'll be able to go and take a look at it and see it and i would love to see what you come up with for father's day cards tag me in your creations whether it's inspired by me or not i would love to see them you can share them with me anytime you want to uh over on social media anywhere you can tag uh, jill cameron creations and i'll take a look at it and see it and comment on it and all that good stuff so i'm popping these up with some foam tape 
and I, the foam tape that I'm using is from scrapbook.com. It is probably the best foam tape I have ever used. It comes in a gazillion different sizes, a gazillion different, um, it, you can do the itty bitty teeny tiny little thin strips or the uh, rolls like this or sheets. And I really do like the sheets, if we're, especially if I'm going to do like the uh, pop up a panel, that is amazing. For shaker cards, which I need to do one of them, it's absolutely fantastic. You can take that thin stuff and just roll it right around the opening for your shaker card window. Oh, it's just amazing stuff. Okay, so um, this is literally the finishing touches on this card. So I'm also using a different, it's an older Nuvo product, but it came out last. I think it came out in 2019 in January-ish when uh, after creativation from the hobby association stuff. I think it was debuted then. It's they're like stone drops from Nuvo, so they're not shiny. They have a matte textured finish to them. Hey, look, there's the skinny stuff. And um I I use those drops on this. The only thing that I noticed that I wasn't really thrilled with with the, these particular drops is that they have a point to them and that might be because I needed to warm them up like I do with the uh, other Nouveau drops. You know how I will put them like under my leg or in my bra, let's face it, um, and warm them up so that they will self-level properly. And that might be what it was. I, I don't know. I, I've got to use them again. So here are here are those drops. And it comes, the, the tip of it's a lot bigger, which surprised me. And it almost has a mousse-like texture to it. And here I'm trying to get the point out of it, and it really never self-leveled. So that was kind of a little disappointing, but I still liked the product. Okay, so don't forget to head over to my blog so that you can get your... Uh, check out the card sketch and the color combination for this. I'm go I have three more cards that are using some of the similar ideas in the same card sketch. And uh, thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Woohoo!